All right, guys, so today I want to talk about some ball python genetics. And specifically, I want to talk to you about recessive genetics. So I saw some snakes at the show this last weekend, and I actually had a few ball pythons. They were normal ball pythons, and they're from some of my clutches here, and I had them listed as 50% het pied. And actually quite a few people came up to me and, and asked me, well, if I take two of these, a male and a female, that are 50% head pied, will I get any pies? <laughs> and I said, well, that's a good question. You may or may not get any pies. And then I actually had another question, uh, and they said, um, so if something is 100% head pied, what does that mean? And so... Uh, there's a little bit of confusion. I know when I first started it was really confusing and if you're not used to the genetics I thought I'd and the genetics is just <laughs> there's so much genetics I mean you could study for years and years and I'm still learning some stuff in, in the genetics of ball python So I thought I'd kind of start slow and just kind of look at one particular area and that is the recessive uh, mutations uh, for ball python so Probably the best place to start, um, I, I kind of want to simplify it and make it really easy, uh, kind of dumb it down, <laughs> let's make it as simple as possible because I want you to be able to wrap your head around it. Uh, so let me show you uh, an example, um, I can kind of give you a demo of, of uh, kind of how you can wrap your head around recessive genetics in ball pythons. Okay, so I'm going to start my discussion in recessive genetics with a snake that's not recessive. <laughs> so take a look at this. So this is my bamboo male. Beautiful, beautiful bamboo male. Uh, so, so a bamboo is codominant. And probably the easiest way to describe recessive is to start with codominant. So if you bred this with a normal, 50% of the babies would come out as bamboo. So basically for every gene there's, uh, uh, there's a place on the, on the gene that can have one or two copies of the gene. Uh, and they, uh, it's basically the allele, <laughs> they call it the allele. So there's actually either one copy or two copies. So for example, the bamboo has one copy of the bamboo gene. And if you bred a bamboo with a bamboo, uh, a certain percentage of the babies would have two copies of the genes. And, and if, you have, if you have two copies of, of the gene on a codominant, you call it a super. And the super bamboo is actually an all-white snake. <laughs> so, so you think one copy looks like this bamboo, two copies of the genes, uh, and you have an all-white snake. They call it a super bamboo. So if you take a super bamboo and you breed it to a normal, all the babies come out as bamboos with one copy of the gene. They all look, and they would all look like this. So, probably the easiest way to explain a recessive. So a recessive is, is almost exactly like this, except you can't see one copy of the gene. So, so, so basically all you could see was the super, and all you could see is the white snake. <laughs> so it's, it's, almost like, it's almost like you went into a room uh, and you had a normal, a bamboo, and then a super bamboo. Uh, you'd have zero copies of the gene, one copy of the gene, and two copies of the gene. You dim the lights down where you can't tell the difference between the normal and the bamboo, and all you can see is the super. And that's kind of what recessive is. <laughs> so you can't see visually one copy of the gene. Whereas in a codominant, you, you can obviously see this is a bamboo with one copy of the gene. Okay, so this is a clown female. And a clown, a clown is actually a recessive. And you can think of the visual clown kind of as the super bamboo. <laughs> so it actually has two copies of the genes. And if you bred this 
clown with a normal, all the normals would have one copy of the gene. But unlike the bamboo where you can actually see the visual bamboo, if it has one copy of the gene for clown, it looks exactly like normal. It's like dimming the lights and, and they all look the same. And that's where people say, um, uh, basically, you know, 100% head clown, 50% head clown, it's, it's all based on statistics. So for example, if you took this clown and you bred it to a normal, uh, all the babies would be 100% het clown, which means that 100% guaranteed, statistically, statistic-wise, all the babies would have one copy of the gene. Even though they look exactly like normals, uh, they have one copy. So, so for example, if you took that super bamboo, bred it to a normal, you could easily see all the babies are bamboos. <laughs> Whereas in the clown, they all have one copy of the gene, but you can't tell because they look exactly like normals. <laughs> okay, here is another example of a recessive gene. So this is an albino, and the, the, the tricky thing about recessive is, <laughs> so, so if I just gave you this albino, and uh, I didn't tell you anything else about the genetics, you would have no idea uh, if it was het for any other recessive genes. And believe it or not, this one is actually het for pied. So this is my albino het pied. And there's no way, just by looking at it, that you could tell that it has one copy of the pied gene. So I actually bred this with my albino pied which is a double recessive visual and half the babies statistically will come out as albino pines the other half will come out as albino head pine okay so if you're new to genetics <laughs> new to ball pythons and you're wondering what a pied looks like I have one right here so this is another recessive mutation and this has two copies of the gene, so it's a visual pied. And uh, so uh, all of your recessives basically uh, have two copies of the genes. And it's, this is, I would say this is kind of like the super in the bamboo uh, where it's visual. Now let me show you a, a snake that I have that has just one copy of a caramel albino gene. All right, so take a look at this beast of a snake. <laughs> this girl, I, I moved her a little bit, and she is not happy. She is, <laughs> look at how big she is. She's probably close to close to 5,000 grams now, but, but this girl is 100% het caramel albino, which means that one of the parents, either the male or the female, was a caramel albino and one of the other parents was not a caramel albino so she carries one copy of the caramel albino gene and I actually had two snakes exactly like that uh, the other one laid eggs and I have some babies over here that are 50 percent het caramel albino <laughs> these haven't been out of the egg that long so I bred my scaleless head to, the, to one of those het caramel albinos. So this actually is 50% het caramel albino in a scaleless head, which is a, a co-dominant. But um, so, so basically what it is, is that scaleless head is kind of like the bamboo, single gene bamboo, but you can't see the bamboo. <laughs> and, and you know for sure because of the pairing and the breeder, and he told me it was 100% head caramel albino. That's the only way that I know that's 100% head caramel albino. So, so when we bred the scaleless head to that 100% head caramel albino, 50% of the babies came out with the gene, with one copy of the gene. Uh, if it was a bamboo, you could easily see yeah, half the snakes are bamboo and half the snakes are normal, right? But you turn down the lights, you can't tell the difference. All you can see is the super, <laughs> which would be the visual caramel albino. Uh, so, so, 
So, so when people walk up to my table and they see, you know, these, uh, here's another one, scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino. This is a female. Uh, so if you took one of these females, you crossed it with a male, uh, and what, what are your odds? So basically, basically when, when people ask me, uh, am I going to get any caramel albinos, uh, if I, if I mix two 50% <laughs> head caramel albinos. So, so one of them has a 50% chance. The other one has a 50% chance. I would say you'd probably have a 25% chance of actually hitting a visual caramel albino, uh, by crossing those. And then on top of that, say for example, say if, if I cross those two 50% Het caramel albinos, and I got a whole clutch of normals. Uh, that would mean um, that if they were both head caramel albino, I missed the odds. And you're not really sure if even from one pairing, <laughs> if you, if you, if they're if one or both are head caramel albino, and it kind of gets diluted from there. So usually. After 50% head caramel albino, you start breeding them with other things, and then people generally will say it's possible head caramel albino. <laughs> so you see, especially if the prices. So for example, uh, like the Sunset Project's really hot right now, and if you were to buy a Sunset, which is a recessive, it it'd be outrageous. I mean, the prices are through the roof. But if you were to buy a head Sunset. The prices are, you know, a few thousand, a little more reasonable. But if you bought like a 50% head sunset, they're a lot lower. And if you go down to just a possible head sunset, you know, you're talking a few hundred bucks because um, <laughs> you're not really sure if you're getting a head sunset <laughs> or not. So the, the further diluted and the further out you go, the further the price kind of drops. But the, the more you're really taking a risk. So, I mean, if you really wanted to get in a really high-end project, really cheap, you could buy a whole bunch of possible het whatever, that, that recessive gene, and uh, kind of play the odds that way. <laughs> and then once you hit it, you can kind of unload everything and then just, just keep those as a holdback. That's kind of one strategy. But hopefully this kind of uh, clarified what a recessive is. And, and I think it's easier when you kind of compare it to uh, a co-dominant and the super. And you can kind of wrap your head around what's really going on. It's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like someone turn out the lights and you can't see uh, the difference between, you know, one copy of the gene and a normal. And, uh, that's, I guess that's kind of how, <laughs> that's kind of how I wrap my head around it. And hopefully you could, you could follow my <laughs> crazy logic with that one. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.